In northwestern New Mexico lies a vast concentration of ancient ruins, known today as Chaco Canyon. Built from sandstone blocks and timber between 900 and 1150 AD, the 15 major complexes of Chaco Canyon contained four-story structures with hundreds of rooms that required thousands of man-hours to construct. Until the 19th century, they were the largest buildings in North America. Chaco Canyon was a center of activity for a lot of different Indian tribes, Pueblo tribes. Archaeologists, anthropologists have a lot of theories about what there was, but what I have studied and what I can tell by just some of the chants from my own tribe and other Pueblo tribes is that this would have been a big center of activity for technological spiritual activities. There's a lot of places on there that has direct bearings up into the universe. When archaeologists first excavated these ruins in 1896, they marveled at their architectural precision. But even more astonishing was the fact that many of these ancient structures, like those found in Egypt, England, and South America, suggested the inhabitants had a sophisticated knowledge of astronomy. A number of devices designed for tracking solar events were found. And at Fajada Butte, which sits at the entrance of the canyon, three giant slabs of rock are positioned near two spiral petroglyphs etched on a cliff wall. During the solstice and the equinox, these rocks catch the sun in such a way as to shine daggers of light on different areas of the petroglyphs. But why would early Native Americans spend so much time building the structures at Chaco Canyon along such precise astronomical alignments? And why build them in such a desolate area of the country? It is one of those sites which has been posing so many questions and which science is only slowly beginning to explain. But really, there are more questions than answers at this moment in time about Chaco Canyon. In his 2006 book, The Orion Zone, archaeoastronomer Gary David proposed that the geographical layout of Hopi ruins in the American Southwest precisely mirrors the star patterns of a number of constellations. When you look at where the ancestral Puebloan major ceremonial sites are actually located, Gary David has identified that when you just map these, you actually find that they depict constellations. Specifically, Orion is very important. Orion's belt points to the brightest star in the sky, Sirius. If one looks at the Hopi mesas as the stars of Orion's belt, they also point to an important location, Chaco Canyon. But why Orion? And could it be merely a coincidence that this constellation pattern has been found at other important sites around the world? And always with the belt pointing toward a place of significance? Ancient astronaut theorists have discovered the constellation of Orion lining up with the Mayan complexes along the Street of the Dead in Mexico City. And here, Orion's belt points to Cholula, the largest pyramid in the world. They also find it at the Giza pyramids in Egypt, with the belt pointing toward the city of Heliopolis, a place of worship for ancient Egyptians. One thing we know about Orion's belt is that this is a theme which is recurring in Mayan mythology. It's also actually a theme which is occurring in Egyptian mythology. Orion's belt and the stars around it were seen as the heart of creation. It is where everything began. And it's probably not coincidental that the Hopi see the place where they are living as the heart of the world. These are ancient people. All they had to go by were the stars. And so they believed, as astrologists believe today, that the stars have certain powers over what goes on on planet Earth. 
According to their legends, the Hopi believe there were three worlds that preceded the one we are in today. Each of those worlds was wiped out when guardians of the sky called to the creator to tell him that his finest creation, humans, were no longer living according to his plan. And they called to him by setting off a warning through the Earth's axis, a vibration strong enough to shift the balance of the planet. Is it possible the structures at Chaco Canyon were built along precise celestial alignments so that the Hopi could predict the periods of Earth's devastation and renewal? Could the guardians of the sky have led them here so they could monitor the position of the sun? Why in the world people settled at that location wasn't, wasn't something that they did on their own. There's no running water there. There was no reason to live there. There's no good soil. They did that because their guardian told them to live there. During the times of the summer and winter solstices, as well as the spring and fall equinoxes, the people at Chaco Canyon could gauge the Earth's balance by watching the path of the sun daggers at Fajada Butte. If the daggers did not pierce the petroglyphs at the same points as the previous year, they would know that the Earth was out of balance. And since the Earth fell out of balance at the end of the previous three worlds, this could mean the end was coming once again. Scientists from NASA determined the earthquake that hit Chile on February 27, 2010 shifted the Earth's axis by three inches. Would the ancestral Pueblo people have seen this as a sign from the guardians above? Well, do you think that's going to show up at Chaco Canyon on that dagger stick that comes down at the time of the solstice? Do you think the Indians were watching that? It's what the Hopi call Koyana.